The purpose of this video is to go over in uh, detail the uh, solutions to the test review for this uh, trigonometry test. And uh, the trigonometry test that this uh, covers is all the right angle trigonometry. Some people refer to it as SOHCAHTOA, uh, sine, cos, and tan for right angle triangles, and also the sine law and cos law. So we're going to start with, uh, in part one here, five multiple choice. And number one says, in a right angle triangle, sine equals, sine theta equals, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. If you're using the acronym SOHCAHTOA, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's why the answer for number one would be C. In a right triangle, cosine theta, or whatever angle you're using, is equal to, and it's uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's why D would be the correct answer for number two. For number three, uh, the sine of the angle is uh, equal to 0 0.2356. And so in order to evaluate this, we would take the, and there's two ways to say this, it's either the inverse sine or the arc sine of 0. 2356 and it says 13.6 so to the nearest degree that would be 14 degrees so that's why A would be the correct answer for number 3. For number 4 which the following correctly states the sine law and notice in all these I have the sine in the numerator if you want to write it always in the denominator that's okay but any way you write it, if you write the sine of a particular angle, and uppercase letters represent angles, so if I say sine angle C on top, it should be side C, the one opposite below. So you wouldn't have sine of angle C over side B. So that's A is incorrect. For a B here, B is the correct one. It says sine A over side A equals the sine of angle B over side B. That's a correct statement of the sine law. C is not right because it has a sine B over side A. And in D, it looks like we're taking the sine of sides. Uh, lowercase b or c would be sides. Lower, uppercase is uh, angles. So D would not be correct either. For number five, it says, which of the following correctly states the cosine law to find a side? And the first one says c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus ab cos c. There should be a two right there. If there was a two there, then a would be correct. In B, A squared equals B squared plus C squared, and it has a 2, but it has a plus. There should be a minus here. It should be minus 2BC cos A. C is the correct one. B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC, the same two sides that are here, times the cosine of the angle opposite the uh, B side over here, the squared. D is actually a correct statement of the cosine law, but it's solved for cos C. So this is what you would use to find an angle, not a side. In uh, part two, and all these grayed out marks represent uh, the typical marks you would have on a test. That's why they're grayed out. This is just a review, but just to show you what these kinds of questions would be worth. So these are application questions, or marked as application questions in number one. In uh, number one here, it says determine the value of the unknown side x to the nearest tenth of a meter. And so you're given this 41 degree angle, uh, angle here and this 30 meter side and we want to find x. Now the x is across from the 41 so that's why we would call it the opposite side and the 30 is the adjacent side because it's beside the angle but it's not the hypotenuse. So I'm working with adjacent and opposite. I know the adjacent I want to find the opposite. So adjacent and opposite if you look up here uh, to our Sokotoa again we'll bring it down here uh, that's tan. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So that's why I would uh, write tan 41 equals and it's opposite over adjacent so it's x equals x over 30 and I want to uh, isolate for x here so what I would do is I would multiply both sides by 30 this is how you would algebraically isolate for x so those 30's divide out and you're left with x alone here would equal 30 tan 41 so we're actually multiplying 30 by the tan of 41 so you could actually type in your calculator 30 tan 41 and that says 26.078 so it's about 26.1 if you wanted to uh, find in your calculator the tan of 41 first and then uh, multiply that by 30 that still works 0 0.869 so it's still about 26.1 
So either way you could uh, evaluate that. In B over here, uh, we're trying to find this side. This is the unknown side. We're told the 13 over here, so that's the opposite side. It's across from the angle 52. And the x is the hypotenuse because it's across from that 90 degree angle. And so opposite and hypotenuse are the sides we're working with, so that's the sine ratio. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's why I'd write the sine of 52 equals 13 over x. It's uh, opposite first, hypotenuse on the bottom. And so notice that the x is in the denominator. We're trying to solve for a variable and a denominator. So in order to algebraically do this, I'd multiply both sides by x. And so these x's divide out. So I have 13 equals x sine 52. And then in order to isolate the x and get the x alone, I would divide both sides by the sine of 52, just like this. So over here, it's, uh, I didn't mean to grab a hold of that. So we're dividing by this 13 by the sine of 52. And of course, the whole point of that is so that those sine 52s divide out. So I have x alone, which is what I have written right here. And it equals 13 over the sine of 52. So 13 divided by the sine of 52 gives us about 16.5. And again, if you wanted to evaluate the sine of 52 and then divide that into 13, so 13 divided by approximately 0 0.788 uh, still gives us about 16 and a half meters. Don't forget your units. For number two, it says solve triangle PQR round to the nearest degree, uh, round angles to the nearest degree. Now, solve a triangle means to find all unknown sides and angles. Right now, we're told that uh, this is 37 degrees, and we know one side, the uh, opposite side from that, the 4.5 meters here. And so we have two sides to find and this angle down here. And actually, you, you can find any of those first. It really doesn't matter which one you, you work with first. I'm going to find side PQ first, but again, you could do other things. So PQ would be the adjacent side because it's beside the 37 degree angle and it's not the hypotenuse. This would be the hypotenuse down here. And so I'm working with uh, the opposite that I know and the adjacent side I'm trying to find. So again, opposite and adjacent is tan. So that's why I'm using tan here. So the tan of 37 would equal 4.5 over the PQ side, the adjacent side. And just like up here, um, the unknown, the PQ, is in the denominator. Notice in this one up here, and actually let me erase my writing up here. Uh, notice when we rearrange for the uh, what's the variable in the denominator, the unknown, it ended up being this number, the 13, divided by this trig ratio, this sine 52. So the same will be true over here. Now we could multiply by PQ again and, and solve for PQ, but it should, by the same reasoning, work out to 4.5 divided by the tan of 37, which is what I have written right here. So. Again, uh, 4.5 divided by the tan of 37 degrees works out to, it's almost exactly 6. So to one decimal place uh, around it, it would be 6.0. So that's why PQ is uh, 6.0 meters across the top here. Now, I could use trig to find the hypotenuse. But if I know in a right triangle two sides, I could also use Pythagoras' theorem. So I wanted to do that because I've already done trig for a bit here. So the uh, RQ side is the longest side. So RQ squared would equal the uh, PR side squared plus the Q, PQ side squared. So RQ squared would equal the 4.5 that you're given squared plus the 6 squared. So if you square 4.5 and 6 and add them, you get 56.25. And then to find RQ, we would take the square root of that, which is 7.5. So this is 7.5 meters here. To find uh, angle R, we know uh, two of the three angles already. In fact, if it's a right angle triangle, if that's 90, then uh, these two angles here have to add to 90. So you could just subtract the 37 from 90 to get 53. You could also use all three angles and say angle R is 180 uh, minus the 90 and the 37, which again gives you 53 degrees. So either way gives you 53 degrees for angle R. 
On the second page, uh, the first of a few problems, uh, Jody and Gabriel are, and here's Jody and here's Gabriel over here, are a certain distance apart on a level plane, a level field. They both see Kim flying in a plane at the same, and they, at the same time, of course, uh, between and above them. She reads her altimeter and finds that she's 1,800 meters above the ground. Now, the angle of elevation from Jody to Kim's plane is 25 degrees. So that means that if Jody is looking at Kim, the line of sight that that makes with the horizontal is 25 degrees. That's what angle of elevation means. And we're told that the angle of depression from Kim to Gabriel is 44 degrees. So an angle of depression technically means this. If you're Kim and you make a line with the horizontal, then the angle that that line and your line of sight makes would be 44 degrees. So this would be 44 degrees in here. And because that's parallel to the ground, then in the triangle, this is also 44. Those two angles would have to be the same. So in the diagram, uh, we really have two right triangles. This would be 1,800 meters here. And that side is opposite the 25 in this triangle, and it's opposite the 44 in this triangle, so that's why I have it labeled as the opposite side. Basically, we're going to use the two different triangles to find the distance from J to P. P is the point directly below Kim on the ground. And the d distance from Gabriel to point P, or G to P, and then just add the two distances together. That's the strategy. So in each of these triangles, they're right triangles. So in uh, the triangle on the left here, again, the 1800 is the opposite side. I'm trying to find the adjacent side. So I'm going to use tan again. So the tan of 25 would equal 1800 over the JP distance. And so just like a couple examples in the last page, so the uh, unknowns in the bottom. So JP would equal 1800 divided by the tan of 25, which works out to 3860 meters. In this triangle over here, it's the 44 degree angle that we're using with this opposite and adjacent side again. So tan once again. So the tan of 44 would equal 1800 over the uh, GP adjacent distance. So GP would be 1800 divided by the tan of 44, which works out to 1864 meters from uh, P to Gabriel. And so the total distance would be the sum of these two, which is about 5724 meters or about 5.7 kilometers. So that's the distance between Jody and Gabriel. For question number four, it says uh, find side D in the triangle. And these are the f this is the first of three questions that involve the non-right angle triangle trigonometry, sine law or cos law. And so in this triangle, you're asked to find side D. D is uh, opposite the 40 degree angle that uh, is labeled with angle D here. And so in this triangle, you're told uh, angle D and angle B and its opposite side. Now, as soon as I see an angle and an opposite I know the opposite side, I start thinking sine law right away. Because that's the way sine law is set up. It's uh, set up with, if you go back up to the multiple choice question here, remember sine law is uh, the sine of an angle over its opposite side. And, and in order to use the sine law, you need to know, and I call it an angle side pair, where you know an angle and the side opposite it, in order to, use, in, in order to be able to find another uh, angle or side. So in this uh, triangle, I'm trying to find D, so uh, the angle opposite is 40. So in order to use the sine law to find a side, you do need to know the angle opposite. So the sine of 40 over D, this is the angle D here, would equal the sine of 51 over the 36.7 side. So this is actually sine of angle D over side D equals the sine of angle B over side B. So in order to find D, D would be the pro equal the product of 36.7 times the sine of 40 and then divided by the sine of 51. So you could evaluate this in your calculator like this. So you actually could type in 36.7. And you don't have to, in these calculators, uh, punch in the multiplication symbol there. So 36.7 times the sine of 40 divided by the sine of 51. And so about 30.4 kilometers would be the distance for D. Again, you could do each of these separately and go 36.7 times that decimal divided by this decimal, and you will get 30.4 kilometers. For number five here, determine the uh, length of side D. Again, we're calling it D in the triangle again. 
And in this case, we're told the other two sides and the angle between them. So when you have a side and then an angle and then the next side in order, um, and you want to find the other side, the only unknown side, that's the situation that, tell, uh, that is modeled best by the cosine law. If you know two sides and the angle between them, which is what we have here, uh, you can find using the cos law the, the side opposite that angle. So notice, unlike this one here, I don't have an angle side pair because I have a, the only angle I know, I don't know the other side. So that's why the sine law will not work here. Uh, so we would have to use the cosine law. But that's what the cosine law is designed to find. A side if you know the opposite angle and the other two sides. So it's D I'm trying to find. So D squared equals, uh, and the other uh, sides are called B and C. So D squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos D. Again, this is the angle opposite that side. So B is the 4.3 side, so 4.3 squared here. C is the 5.8 side, so 5.8 squared here minus 2 times the 4.3 times 5.8, and angle D is a 61. So in your calculator, we would square this, square this. Now, very important that you, OK, so we can do the 4.3 squared plus, and actually, you can actually type the entire thing in here, but I want to show you something. So that's actually this part right here evaluated. Afterwards, you subtract from that the product of all this. So you have to make sure you do the 2 times 4.3 times 5.8, and you also multiply that by the cos of 61. So basically, the 52.13 is this part up to here, and then we're going to subtract from that the 24.18. So 52.13 minus 24 point, and I'll round to two decimal places, okay? So 27.9, so that's where that decimal is coming from. This uh, has more digits in it because I, I didn't do any rounding at all in this calculation. So d squared equals that number, and then to find d, we take the square root. So the square root of, and actually, we'll just type in, instead of using the last answer, 27.95, and so this is about 5.3 kilometers. In question number six here, we're asked to calculate the size of angle B, this one right down here. And notice that we're given all three sides, but no angles whatsoever. So you can't use the sine law because you need to know uh, a side angle pair, and we don't know any angles whatsoever. The cosine law, and this is similar to that last uh, multiple choice question with one of the, well, sort of incorrect answers. Um, the cosine law can be used to find an angle if you know all of the other sides, all of the sides. I shouldn't say other sides, if you know all of them. So if we want to find angle B, then it would equal C squared plus D squared minus B squared. So notice the one that you're squaring and subtracting is the one opposite the angle you're finding over 2CD. Notice that these are the same two sides as the C and D up here. And so when you do this, it's very important to make sure you calculate this correctly. I just substitute all the numbers in from the triangle here. So in the in the numerator in the top, it's 9.3 squared plus 5.9 squared minus 7.4 squared. So that works out to 66.54. In the denominator, we have 2 uh, multiplied by the 9.3 times the 5.9 side. And so that's that number. So 66.54 and then divided by the 109 0.74. So that's where the 0 0.6063 comes from here. And in order to find the angle, then we would go uh, inverse cosine of uh, 0 0.6063. And that gives us an angle of, to the nearest degree, about 53 degrees. And that would be the end of the review.